Alright y'all, welcome to Unit 2, come say. Um, this is the first video for Unit 2, come say. Multiple choice. And, um, yeah. Okay. Just reminding you for those of y'all watching this video years from now My name is Mr. Charles. This is make it make it simple TT or make IT simple TT whichever one you want to say And this is my website make it simple TT .com. you go here and you can see stuff and You will see the classes that I have for CSEC and IT and all that stuff and, and Fill out the form, you submit, and you get to join the class. When you get to join the class, you get me being twice as helpful as I am on YouTube because you are my actual student and I'll care about you. And I'll respond to your messages at 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, all that, actually, no, I'll respond to it at half past 4 and I'll wake up. But close enough, right? Close enough. Giovanni, yep, good evening to you. I hope you bring the squad in. You know. I hope you bring the squad after all the bag, all your bag for unit two comes. I and three people in the live. I don't know what to do again. I don't know what to do again. I try, I try. So let's get some, um, let's get some comes. I questions up on the inside here, all up in the all up inside here. Hey, look, Divina too. I'm feeling special. I'm feeling special. All right, there we go. There we go. To, um, we'll start off with some module one stuff. I'll just pull some module one questions and let's see how how well we fare here. If we good. All right, which ADT is best described as FIFO? FIFO means first in. First out. So first in, first out. So it comes in and um, when it comes in, it's going to be uh, a Q. Yeah, a Q. First in, first out. Class stack is last in, first out. So I stack. When you jump inside the stack, you end up going at the bottom. So first and last out. But with a Q, you jump in, and when you reach here, you'll be the first man to, to, to jump out, to, right? So that's A. No questions there. I remember there was some some very very dumb dumbish controversial questions in um in unit two comp sci. So I'll try to find them for y'all. But let's take it piece by piece. A Q ADT operation NQX as the element to the front of the Q, as the element to the rear of the Q. So when you NQ something in a Q, where do you add the element? You add it to the rear. So like if you have a 2 here and a 3 here and you have NQ 5, the 5 will jump here. So you're adding it to the rear of the Q. So B is the answer. We will take B and move on. Let's take the number three now. If you all do um if you all don't understand how these things work, I have videos. I have short videos on stacks, queues, link lists, all them different things on the channel. So if you really need to, it's cool. Um Right, um, if the elements P, T, S, R, and Q are added to a Q in that order and then remove that one at a time, in what order will they remove? Say so add in to a Q, say so add in P, T, S, R, and Q. 
and then you're removing them in that order what order will they be removed it's a Q so you're gonna come back all the same way P T S R Q so C same answer all right good um number four now hi Isis I see you there uh, number four all right the Mount Hololo high school has one computer lab with ten computers and one printer fully network watch ADT would be best suited to handle the print jobs um, the print jobs will be stored in a print queue because you have to clear the queue so our queue will be the best place to put it so see easy pickings easy pickings Nothing too technical here. Um, okay, I'll have to put this one half half. Five. So I'm ready for this half here. One half there, and then the next half. We'll go next it. this person remember to like the video oh oh thanks you're so kind you care all right so i'll start counting the elements w x y and z which of the following would be the contents of the stack after two elements are review removed and element r was inserted all right so let me see we're removing two elements so we're going to get a w coming out and an x will come out so then top will be here and then we're going to insert our R, so the X will be gone, uh, so the R will go there and the other. So we're supposed to get R, Y, Z. B, yeah. Kick, kick, real kick. You just getting diabetes right now. Let's continue. Alright, which of the following is true for both a linear search and a binary search? On average, they search half the list, not as far binary search only. In the worst case scenario, they search the entire list, that is for linear search only. They can be used for searching on ordered lists, that is true, you could do that for both of them. They require the list to be ordered, no, that is only for binary, so the answer here will be C. Alright... Um, C number seven is which of the following is a specification of a set of data and the set of operations that can be formed can be performed on the data. Ooh, I remember this. I remember this. Um, set of data and the operations that can be performed on it that's called an abstract data type right uh, abstract data type is a set of data and the operations that you can have so the set of operations are usually like push pull 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 is not with it push and pop and nq dq all that stuff all those are the operations and any the set of data will be the actual things I have inside there. So abstract data type is the term for that. A D T. Alright, let's try this here. I'll right, hit your half half again. So let's be out now while uh, while I neatly try to get them next to each other. Alright, so this one is an algorithm and it's asking us to check some things. Things we are checking would be. Alright. So there is a. Count is equal to zero. Flag is false. Repeat. If list count, count start at zero is equal to target, then 
something end if something until flag is true or something I'm missing piece of this or no that's the mm -hmm. old question all right yeah so let's try to figure it out if list count is equal to target then I gather it's a search yeah like it's a linear search so if it's equal to target then we set flag is equal to true and if and then yeah I'd want to count so flag is true I'd want to count you see this this these answers are so stupid because all of them have one and two at the start so like there is not even a choice for one and two it's kind of weird but anyhow if flag is equal to false no sorry if flag is equal to true or count is something count is equal to n minus one meaning i reach to the end of the um the end of the list yeah count is equal to n minus one because when you're counting um you're starting from zero and the n would be the number of things i have in like array so this is literally a linear switch but they didn't tell you it's a linear switch they just said with sequence of steps would complete the procedure. So you had a guess that is a linear search or something. It's kind of awkward. Did they say it's a linear search? Oh no, it did say it is a linear search. Okay, yeah, it is a linear search right here. So the answer is A. Right? Because you'll check to see if count is less than minus one. And then if it's not found, you'll write target is not found if the false is there. So yeah, A is correct. That's a linear search. That's my bad. I didn't um I didn't read the question. Because I'm just like a student complacent just like you maybe even more all right let me see a front uh frog and dog oh i remember this oh my head started with already. frog and dog grasshopper b fish and snake which of the following list will not be obtained at any point while applying a selection sort okay we had to actually sort out this whole thing so for the benefit of those who have never seen this question before and haven't done it, I'm going to um, work it out. All right, so if we have frog and and uh, whatnot, so we're going to list it frog, ant, dog, G R, B E, F I and S N. Right, that's what I list them as. Right. So, in a uh, selection so what we're going to happen is that we're going to take this first value here and we're going to compare it with everything else to determine if it is going to um if it's going to switch with anybody so we're going to switch with it we're going to switch it frog and then we're going to uncompare is frog is 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 this worthy of switching here is this the highest value that we could switch with ant is there is there anything else that going to give competition for ant no right so we do not we're going to get ant frog dog grasshopper bee fish and snake right but once that's once this selection sort is done this and here is going to be at the start no matter what so we just work in from frog go up right so we're gonna check frog then we're gonna check dog then gr then be then finsn so basically next thing i'm gonna swap here is the fr and the be so we will get back our ant here but the bee will come here the dog will stay there the grasshopper will stay there but the frog will get pushed up to the top like that then you'll have the fish and then you have the snake so now we have two things sorted which is up to that point so we're not worried about anything on this side we worry about everything on that side right so we're gonna check now we have dog Grasshopper, frog, fish, snake. Any anything gonna switch a dog? Nope. Cool. So we're gonna stay as is. And then you're going to cross there and then we have to deal with the grasshopper, frog, fish, and snail. Then we gotta ask ourselves, G is there anything that comes before G and F? Well yeah, F and G will end up having to switch because F comes before G. So we'll end up having FI or FR. 
H I J K L M N O P Q R. So the grasshopper and the grasshopper and the fish will end up switching. So we'll end up with the ant, bee, dog. Um, then we'll have the fish here, grasshopper there, frog. No, frog will stay here, and grasshopper will end up there, and snail will end up there. So far, we have up to this point here sorted. And then, uh, well, basically, what will happen after that is that the GR and the FR will switch. So we will end up getting ant, bee, dog, fish, grasshopper. No, FR will stay there, GR will stay there. So, right, so we already be sorting and that's it to the end. All right, so which one will not be obtained at any point? Do you have ant, frog, dog, grasshopper, bee, fish, snake? Ant, frog, dog, grasshopper, bee, fish, snake? We have that one. Do we have ant, bee, frog, dog, grasshopper, fish, snake? Ant, bee, frog, dog, nope. Nope, and B frog dog. Nope, 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 nope. So def therefore, our answer is clearly B because that doesn't exist. But as provided, it did the whole selection sort properly, which some students may not do very well. Do we have ant, B dog, fish, frog, grasshopper, snake? Just to check. Ant, B dog, fish, frog, grasshopper, snake. Yes, we have that. Do we have ant, B dog, ant, B dog? grasshopper frog fish snake yeah we have that here so all of these we could see we just we didn't see any b so that's why b is the answer yeah um all right so then there's a follow-up to this one now let me see 10 Let's follow up. Assume that the list is sorted when searching the sorted list, which of the following will be most quick found most quickly using our binary search. Alright, so if the list is sorted, that means we would have this here as our end product. The thing that will be found most quickly with using our binary search will be the fish because the binary search will basically find the middle and check to see if the middle is what we're looking for. So the answer will be C fish. Because our binary search has started with a middle value and if you don't find any middle value, you'll cut off and go either right or you go left, depending on how you write it. So fish will be easily found because it's the middle list. Middle list is not a word, but we'll just accept middle. And we're going again. I'm trying to get 15 questions done tonight. I'll do our next 15 tomorrow when is this exam what date is this exam i think it's supposed to be tuesday or friday which day is it i think it's tuesday if i remember my calendar properly but it very well could be friday i don't know so be, during the course of the week i'll do some more lives to kind of go through the software development part and this is it's Wednesday, oh. Well, there I thought I was correct. Wait, 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 wait. Tomorrow is IT Unit One. Just a moment, let's double check this thing on my feed because somehow I mixing up my life. Alright, the twentieth is IT Unit One. 22nd, oh, okay, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday exam. So Wednesday is Comsa Unit 2, Thursday is IT Unit 2, and Friday is Comsa Unit 1. All right, okay, cool. I am making turns now. Okay, a queue is implemented using our one dimensional array, which are the following best describes the DQ operation performed using this array okay one of the things that well the syllabus is not really clear about how they want you to implement a queue you could implement a queue in a linear way or you could implement a queue in a circular way 
and they don't really stipulate which one to use exactly at which time which gets me a little bit annoyed because if you want the children to learn circular then make sure everybody learns circular if you want the children and them to learn linear with a switch to the switch anyhow. but uh, DQ operation would be let's say I have the numbers 3, 9, 6 and 4 and you choose a DQ what will happen is that you DQ this 3 out right when you DQ that 3 out Using the shift system, what you do is you do a for loop to shift everybody back to one so that you do have a run out of space in the queue, which is possible. So, which of the following best describes the DQ operation performing here? Check that the queue is empty and return the first element. That's wrong. Return the first element in the array and shift the remaining elements up one place. That is very plausible. That could be correct. Check that the queue is not empty and return the first element in the area and shift the remaining elements up one place. Check that the queue is not empty. This one actually sounds better because you're checking first, so we'll take out that one. Return the last element of the array, so I'll say C. Because you have to check to see that it's not empty. You need to make sure you have actually something that you could DQ and then you will hit that out and then you'll do the shift and shift everybody down. Alright, so that'll be C because that's the shift method. Um really not too sure if every teacher has teach the shift method. Most will teach just the linear um linear Q and the circular Q. But that's okay, because you saw it now. Let's do a next question. Alright, was the abstract data type depicted above? I mean, if I could draw a cake, I would draw it, huh? See if I can draw a slice of cake. Yeah. Wait, it's so easy now. Let's stop telling me the answers. All right. I will, I will accept that I am insulting your intelligence. I am sorry. <clears throat> Alright, so what's the abstract data type being depicted here? It's called a linked list. Whoop de doo. Yay. Alright. You're still there, right? Or they just get bored because it's so easy. Okay. Which of the following operations is associated with the ADT above? This thing here is a link list. So in a link list, you do use NQ and DQ because that is for a Q. Pop is for a stack. And insert will be for a link list. So a insert. Cool. Fourteen. This question. I hate it because it's so wrong. Is this one mine? No, no, no. This, this is not the question. This is not the question. Sorry. This one's straightforward. I the target value is I in a binary search. So we're searching for I. How many comparisons are made before we conclude that it's not there? So, first comparison will be check the F. See if it's there. Is it there? No. Is the F um, less than EFGHI? It's less than that. So, therefore, we'll cut off that part there. And then we're going to try to deal with only this section up here. Then we will check the K. K is the KI? No. Um, is K 
supposed to be is I supposed to come before K or after? So we go down and cut left and we will cut off that part here and all we're working with is the G. Is it G? No. So therefore we're making three comparisons because we check in, cut in half, check, cut in half, check, cut in half. Um, this one was an easy one to cut in half because you had an odd number, so you always had somebody in the middle. But sometimes you have an even number. When there's an even number, it's kind of default to the one on the left hand side, right? Um, all right, so. This one here is the last one I'll do for the night. I'll probably do our next one tomorrow. So we could go through some of the software engineering stuff. Because some of the software engineering stuff, very, very iffy. Like, like real iffy, iffy. And then there's some really hard ones that I remember that I saw that I have to pull out to do too. But anyhow. Alright, so we have our binary search. I mean, a uh, bubble sort, sorry. And the bubble sort is going to check to see, to sort something, right? So, code for bubble sort. We say for position is 1 to n minus 1. This is going to allow us to go through the whole array up to the last value. Up to the last value here. So, we could come here. So if this position is greater than this position 1, which is basically comparing this one here with this one here, this is the plus 1 here. So we compare these two. Um, when, they, when they compare these two, what happens is after you compare, if it is greater, then the flag goes to true. No, why the flag going to true? The flag don't have to go to true. If it is greater, we want to take the list position and put it inside a temp. So we want to take whatever is inside here and drop it inside the temp. Then after you put it inside the temp, you want to take the thing that is in position 1 and throw it in, um, in the plus one position and put it inside the original position, right? So, so far, so far we're looking like this and this good. This here. You could take the list down. No, you can't put this inside temp one time because they never move out on inside this position one. Alright, so the answer for this is B. Yeah. Because clearly, once you, once you figure out that it's bigger, the first thing you want to do is put it inside the temp, but the next thing that you want to do, you don't want to take the temp and throw it inside position 1 because you need to clear out position 1 and store it inside there. That's basically what the swap is supposed to do. And that's what's happening here. You put it inside the temp, then you're clearing out what is in position plus 1 and put it inside normal 1. Then you're taking the temp and put it in the plus 1. Then you set the flag to true because it is true that you made a swap. Yeah. Alright, so B is the answer there. B, 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 B. Alright, y'all, it is 10 o'clock. It is way past my bedtime. So I want to thank you all for being here. Tomorrow night, most likely, probably around 8 o'clock, somewhere around there. Let me say half past it. I'll come back and do our next 15 because I have been procrastinating. Okay, not procrastinating. I, I do all the other subjects. So I do keep IT Unit 1, Comsa Unit 1, IT Unit 2, and Comsa Unit 2 just kind of get pushed to the back burner because I'd CXC to deal with. Um, if you yeah, if you need the link, if you need the link for this for the student hub, just check me on Instagram. I'll send it to you, right? And you'll be able to find all sorts of resources for all sorts of subjects there, right? So you can link me there. I tell you, thank you very much for your time. Um, I'll I should be able to get three sessions done before um before Wednesday, and of course the crash courses are still there. Just in case there's stuff that you don't understand, you can go and look at the crash courses on YouTube, and. Yeah, that is it. Eh? So, 
good fights. Good night. You're welcome. Bye-bye.